The Bentley plunged on through the darkness, its fuel gauge pointing to zero. It had pointed to zero for more than 60 years now. It wasn't all bad being a demon. You didn't have to buy petrol, for one thing. The only time Crowley had bought petrol was once in 1967 to get the free James Bond bullet hole in the windscreen transfers, which he rather fancied at the time. On the back seat, the thing in the basket began to cry. The air raid siren wail of a newly born, high, wordless and old. It was quite a nice hospital, thought Mr Young. It would have been quiet too, if it wasn't for the nuns. They quite liked nuns. Not that he was, you know, a left footer or anything like that. No, when it came to avoiding going to church, the church he stolidly avoided going to was St Cecil and All Angels. No nonsense, C of E. And he wouldn't have dreamed of avoiding going to any other. All the others had the wrong smell. Floor polish for the low, somewhat suspicious incense for the high. Deep in the leather armchair of his soul, Mr Young knew that God got embarrassed at that sort of thing. But he liked seeing nuns around, in the same way that he liked seeing the Salvation Army. It made you feel that it was all all right. The people somewhere were keeping the world on its axis. This was his first experience of the chattering order of St Beryl, however. St Beryl, Articulatus of Krakow, reputed to have been martyred in the middle of the 5th century. According to legend, Beryl was a young woman who was betrothed against her will to a pagan, Prince Casimir. On their wedding night, she prayed to the Lord to intercede, vaguely expecting a, a miraculous beard to appear. And she had, in fact, already laid in a small ivory-handled razor, suitable for ladies, against this very eventuality. Instead, the Lord granted Beryl the miraculous ability to chatter continually about whatever was on her mind, however inconsequential, without pause for breath or food. According to one version of the legend, Beryl was strangled by Prince Casimir three weeks after the wedding, with their marriage still unconsummated. She died a virgin and a martyr chattering to the end. According to another version of the legend, Casimir bought himself a set of earplugs and she died in bed with him at the age of 62. The chattering order of Saint Beryl is under a vow to emulate Saint Beryl at all times, except on Tuesday afternoons for half an hour, when the nuns are permitted to shut up and, if they wish, to play table tennis. Deirdre had run across them while being involved in one of the causes, possibly the one involving lots of unpleasant South Americans fighting other unpleasant South Americans, and the priests egging them on instead of getting on with proper priestly concerns like organising the church cleaning rota. The point was, Nuns should be quiet. They were the right shape for it, like those pointy things you got in those chambers Mr Young was vaguely aware your hi-fi got tested in. They shouldn't be, well, chattering all the time. He filled his pipe with tobacco. Well, they called it tobacco. It wasn't what he thought of as tobacco. It wasn't the tobacco you used to get. And wondered reflectively what would happen if you asked a nun where the gents was. Probably the Pope sent you a sharp note or something. He shifted his position awkwardly and glanced at his watch. One thing though, at least the nuns had put their foot down about him being present at the birth. Deirdre had been all for it. She'd been reading things again. 
one kid already and suddenly she's declaring that this confinement was going to be the most joyous and sharing experience two human beings could have. That's what came of letting her order her own newspapers. Mr Young distrusted papers whose inner pages had names like lifestyle or options. Well, he hadn't got anything against joyous sharing experiences. Joyous sharing experiences were fine by him. The world probably needed more joyous sharing experiences. But he had made it abundantly clear that this was one joyous sharing experience Deirdre could have by herself. And the nuns had agreed. They saw no reason for the father to be involved in the proceedings. When he thought about it, Mr Young mused, they probably saw no reason why the father should be involved anywhere. He finished thumbing the so-called tobacco into the pipe and glared at the little sign on the wall of the waiting room that said that for his own comfort, he would not smoke. For his own comfort, he decided he'd go and stand in the porch. If there was a discreet shrubbery for his own comfort out there, so much the better. He wandered down the empty corridors and found a doorway that led out onto a rain-swept courtyard full of righteous dustbins. He shivered and cupped his hands to light his pipe. It happened to them at a certain age, wives, 25 blameless years, and then suddenly they were going off and doing those robotic exercises in pink socks with the feet cut out. And they started blaming you for never having had to work for a living. It was hormones or something. A large black car skidded to a halt by the dustbins. A young man in dark glasses leapt out into the drizzle, holding what looked like a carry cart and snaked toward the entrance. Mr Young took his pipe out of his mouth. You've left your lights on, he said helpfully. The man gave him the blank look of someone to whom lights are the least of his worries and waved a hand vaguely toward the Bentley. The lights went out. Oh, that's handy, said Mr Young. Infrared, is it? He was mildly surprised to see that the man did not appear to be wet and that the carry cot appeared to be occupied. Has it started yet? said the man. Mr Young felt vaguely proud to be so instantly recognisable as a parent. Yes, he said. <laughs> they made me go out, he added thankfully. Already? Any idea how long we've got? We, Mr Young noted. Obviously a doctor with views about co-parenting. I think we were uh, getting on with it, said Mr Young. What room is she in? said the young man hurriedly. We're in room three, said Mr Young. He, he patted his pockets and found the battered packet which, in accord with tradition, he had brought with him. Oh, would we care to share a joyous cigar experience? he said. But the man had gone. Mr Young carefully replaced the packet and looked reflectively at his pipe. Always in a rush, these doctors, working all the hours God sent. 